Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam Lund, and in this video, we're going to talk about how do you direct your food into muscle, not fat. <laughs> Basically, how can you make sure that the food you do eat, the calories you consume, how can they be used more for muscle growth and leanness and fitness instead of fat storage? So make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So the idea for this video came from my own uh, Instagram post um, about uh, nutrient partitioning of uh, how to direct your food into basically muscle and uh, fitness instead of uh, you know gaining fat. In the beginning, there's a story. It's uh, Jack and Tom. They're twins. One of them is obese and the other one is muscular. Jack is jacked and Tom is Tom. He's a bit fatter. Uh, why is Jack jacked? Well, uh, that's because his body is mostly building muscle instead of fat. So he's in a, basically in this situation where his body is utilizing the food in a way that promotes uh, fat, not fat storage but instead muscle growth and uh, muscle hypertrophy. This, is pheno this phenomenon is basically called the nutrient partitioning. How does your body use the fuel that it has? How is it going to be using it for uh, fat storage, building muscle or uh, you know burning it off for energy? Like uh, those different kinds of scenarios are all possible. And your own lifestyle and the eating habits that are going to de determine what is going to happen to the food that you eat. Uh, because like our own bodies are all very different. Some are, have a very high metabolic rate. Some people have, uh, let's say, more muscle mass. Some people have less uh, muscle mass, more fat. And it always a reflection of the signals that your body is basically receiving from the environment. And what, how does it uh, basically partition those nutrients that you're receiving? The biggest lever that is going to determine or the biggest signal for uh, building muscle is going to be uh, resistance training. No doubt about it. Uh, lifting weights, calisthenics, any kind of resistance training. That is the biggest that, or the loudest signal as well that signals the body that, hey, you need to build muscle because it's a adaptation requirement you need to have this strength you need to have this muscle tissue because you're in an environment where you are lifting things and uh in order to survive then uh you need uh, you need to have muscle whereas if you weren't under any resistance you're like sedentary like you know in bed rest in a hospital or in outer space then you're gonna lose uh, a bunch of muscle because there's no uh, there's no signal there's no stimulus that is uh, enforcing the requirement for muscle and the body basically on an epigenetic level as well, uh, starts to uh, use the food that you eat more for fat storage because there is no need to have muscle. Muscle is a very expensive tissue and unless there is a real dire need for having muscle, then uh, you're not going to build it either. So that's why there needs to be this loud signal from resistance training that would tell the body that, hey, you need to have some muscle. Yeah, buddy! Resistance training also increases your insulin sensitivity, which uh, helps you to direct the nutrients that you do consume into muscle cells. So um, muscles, muscle glycogen stores are uh, finite. There's only a certain uh, amount of muscle glycogen in, in there. And uh, things that deplete the muscle glycogen are usually just, you know, resistance training and heavier, intense uh, training. If you don't deplete your muscle glycogen, then, you know, those muscle glycogen stores are not never going to be fully tapped into. And uh, there's always this potential for overspilling. Whereas if you do resistance training, you not only become more insulin sensitive, it's easier for you to store those nutrients as a uh, muscle glycogen instead of fat. Uh, but at the same time, you also have just, you know, the de depleted uh, glycogen stores that, you know, you imagine it's like a kitchen sink that... <laughs> things that promote insulin sensitivity are, you know, having a bit more muscle mass again, depleting your muscle glycogen stores and resistance training, all those things basically uh, help to shuttle uh, nutrients into the muscle cells and then they're going to be used for uh, muscle growth, muscle uh, basically glycogen synthesis instead of fat storage. The other scenario is insulin resistance uh, or being full on your liver, on your muscle glycogen stores. Those happen when you're like overeating calories, overeating carbohydrates and you're being sedentary. You're not really doing anything that stimulates insulin sensitivity and uh, you actually become insulin resistant so it's much easier to gain fat if you're insulin resistant it's much easier to get uh, diabetic if you're insulin resistant whereas the opposite is the case if you're insulin sensitive diabetes one key thing uh, when it comes to exercise timing and uh, eating is that your body is actually the most insulin sensitive after after resistance training so you uh, lift weights you um, basically deplete the muscle glycogen stores and you become very super insulin sensitive. So in that scenario, you don't even need insulin to shuttle um, glucose into muscle cells because you activate these uh, glucose transporters like GLUT4, which then uh, directly helps to shuttle uh, glucose into the muscle cells, even if you don't, even if you're insulin resistant, for example, like even diabetics are able to do that if they lift, lift, if, if they lift the weights before eating carbs. So uh, weightlifting is the most best thing for insulin sensitivity and nutrient partitioning because it directly tells your body to you know this is what you need to do with the nutrients you need to build muscle and uh, burn fat and uh, 
that's why generally I am a big proponent of, uh, let's say, if I do eat carbs, then I would much rather eat those carbs in a post-workout uh, scenario because uh, then those carbs would be used only for uh, or primarily for uh, glycogen resynthesis and uh, recovery instead of like um, fat storage because you're more likely to store the carbs as fat if you uh, eat them while you're being sedentary like you know for example in the morning eating carbs you know contrary to popular belief um, you would be more more prone to store the carbs as fat in that scenario because you are like sedentary you haven't moved around a lot you're in ketosis actually in the morning and you're burning fat so you don't really need to have carbs in the morning uh, you would much rather have them uh, post-workout uh, when it comes to like optimal nutrient partitioning different macronutrients also affect uh, nutrient partitioning you know obviously uh, protein is uh, generally the most you know anabolic uh, macronutrients it's going to help with the most uh, muscle growth as well as uh, fat uh, burning because protein uh, has a high thermic effect of food it consumes a lot of calories to digest it and it also stimulates the muscle protein synthesis directly so if you do eat um, protein then uh, generally you will have a slightly higher lean body mass and the studies also support that that people on high protein diets you know generally always lose more weight and they generally have always higher bone, bone density and higher muscle mass as a result of that Obviously, overall calorie intake is also very important because if you, even if you're eating a clean diet, but you're overeating calories, then it doesn't matter how optimized your routine is or how uh, nuanced or how strategic it is. If you're still overeating calories, then you're still going to gain fat. You know, you may gain some muscle, but you also still uh, gain some fat. So that's why calorie intake matters. You know, you shouldn't overeat calories and uh, any like excess calories beyond a certain point are going to eventually end up as body fat. So uh, if you're bulking, so to say, you're doing dirty bulk with uh, 1,000 a thousand calories of surplus, 1,500 calories, 2,000 calories surplus, then uh, the majority of those calories are going to be still as stored as fat and you know, only a, a small amount of it is gonna end up as muscle tissue. So there is only maybe like 500 calories at max that you need to be in a surplus to build muscle. You don't need a ton of calories to build muscle. Uh, you don't, you just need to apply the mechanical tension from training you need to progressively overload get stronger over time and maintain consistent with your protein intake so yeah like the myth that you need, you need to be doing like dirty bulk, bulking is uh, wrong because you're going to end up gaining a bunch more fat than you would with muscle and uh, yeah like the leaner the bulk the slower the bulk then the more permanent and the less body fat you're going to gain as a result of that as well it's a trap so at the end of the day you can choose like you can choose what kind of a body you have you can choose um, how the food you eat is going to affect your body composition is it going to be helping you to build muscle or is it going to help you make become uh, obese <laughs> or burn fat or whatever it is different kinds of methods do that different kinds of signals generally the signals that help with uh, lean muscle mass and uh, less body fat are, you know, lifting weights, exercising regularly, being insulin sensitive, eating a slightly higher protein intake and being uh, moderate with your calories. The signals that promote fat storage instead of uh, muscle growth are being sedentary, not moving around, not exercising, um, eating excess calories, surplus of calories and being low in protein and thus you become insulin resistant, which then uh, prevents your body from utilizing the nutrients in this uh, better way one pro tip i can also give you is that um, i think that you should never want to become uh, too fat basically because once there's like a certain threshold after which like if you get too high in your body fat percentage then uh, after that your all your biomarkers are going to go bad your uh, insulin sensitivity goes down your blood sugar levels go up your blood pressure goes up and you develop this uh, visceral fat around the organs etc after like this certain threshold and so that's why you never want to go beyond that threshold so for men i think that maybe is around like 16 percent body fat and uh, for women maybe 22 percent something like that and after that uh, beyond that uh, threshold your biomarkers are going to be much worse and your insulin sensitivity is much lower so if you cross that threshold then uh, after that threshold it's much easier for you to store fat and it's harder to build muscle whereas if you're below that threshold then you're very insulin sensitive the foods you eat are always going to help you to build lean tissue you're going to have better biomarkers you're going to have better insulin sensitivity and your nutrient partitioning is by default much higher so that's why bodybuilders even though they're eating like massive amounts of food, they may be eating like junk foods, crazy cause like cheat days or something like that. Just because they're like very low body fat, they're maybe like 8% body fat. Just because of that, the nutrient partitioning is still excellent. Their insulin sensitivity is super high because they're training hard and they're lean. Uh, whereas someone who is, you know, uh, maybe uh, above 
let's say 20% body fat and they eat the same food, then their body is going to react much worse to that same food because they are insulin resistant, they don't have that insulin sensitivity and their nutrient partitioning is so poor that uh, the food they eat is just going to end up as body fat. So that's why, yeah, you never want to get too uh, high in your body fat percentage because the lower your body fat percentage is, then generally your uh, nutrient partitioning is also better. But that's it for this video. I hope you got some valuable information from this. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.